Hey guys, my name is Elise. I'm a therapist and wellness coach. Welcome back to COVID-19 Mental Health Chats. Today we have Karis Wong as a guest feature. She is a licensed professional counselor in Texas, a TVRI practitioner, a SARS pandemic survivor, and she joins us with some advice from the heart as a person and a professional. So Karis, thanks for joining me for this chat today. I understand that partners are running into challenges from both the coronavirus pandemic and stay-at-home orders. And one of those most critical pieces in a relationship is communication for adult couples. What would you identify as common points that disrupt the communication flow in these times? Right. So even for couples that Normally, maybe they are like the masters of effective communication and during this time, it's still really stressful and very challenging. So let's say, you know, starting with the couples that are stuck at home. So maybe they're having a hard time um, because let's say some couples, they may prefer more privacy, more independence, and they're easily getting more annoyed about, you know, being stuck with each other and close proximity. Um, but then for a lot of people, let's say during a pandemic, during a critical incident, some of the common responses for just a lot of individuals in general, maybe people are getting a lot more forgetful, um, maybe they're having a hard time concentrating, people might be a lot more irritable, maybe having a lower sex drive. So even with just all of that, it's not hard to imagine that it would be so much easier for couples to fight, to have more conflicts. Um, but something that is a little bit even more um, disconcerting or um, that people may want to pay more attention is that sometimes during uh, a time like this, people would withdraw or isolate themselves. That's also mm -hmm. a common response, but that can be very dangerous in a relationship. So research has shown that um, emotional disengagement has a high correlation to extramarital affairs. Mm -hmm. So during a time like this, you know, let's say, let's create a scenario, a first responder or, um, you know, frontline medical worker, they went through a really overwhelming day, they witnessed a really difficult death, you know, maybe the, their patient died alone, mm -hmm. and they went home with the good intention of, I don't want to burden my spouse, um, I'm just going to keep it to myself and not bother them but then maybe for the spouse they're feeling this sense of well i'm feeling really rejected i got away or they may feel a lot more insecure mm -hmm. and then you know the dance just goes on and on with then all the more the spouse might be checking their emails and sneaking to look at their phones and then the first responder might be even less likely to open up um, more likely to sulk and withdraw more and more. And so, of course, this is only a hypothetical scenario, but it is not hard to picture couples. Um, some of them might be more prone to having challenges like that. Hmm. Right. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. Um, and you gave a really great example of a couple where one of them is a healthcare worker or a frontline worker. And um, that gives us a great context. So, um, you know, for that hypothetical scenario, which many people may identify with, whether they themselves are in a couple relationship with a health worker, or they have a personal relationship of some kind with a family member who is a health care worker or a friend who is a health care worker in the community. Um, we could apply this example to many scenarios. So what would you advise then as the first place to start to reestablish a sense of safety and trust when the environment disrupts the status quo or highlights pre-existing issues in a couple's relationship? And, um, you know, we can stay on that example of a couple, a romantic couple, or even expand it for a conversation for anyone who has a form of relationship with someone who's on the front lines. Sure. So let's go back to some of the categories or examples that we talked about earlier. So let's say the couple that are stuck at home a lot, mm -hmm. 
So this is the time when you dig back into the database that you have um, stored up through the time, however long that you guys have been together, and rely on the understanding of, oh, okay, so my spouse is an introvert. All the more, this is the time when I extend grace and tell myself, okay, don't take it personal. I need to give them space. And then on the other hand, maybe for the extrovert in the relationship might be um, extending grace by saying, this is all the more the time that I need to spend time with them because they need the support during this stressful time. So going back to their understanding and their friendship, the foundation of the relationship, and then extend the grace can be very helpful. So let's say going to the next scenario, which is a lot of the common um, responses that are making it challenging. Mm -hmm. So I have um, this handy dandy handout here from Dr. John Gottman from the Gottman Institute. So there are some um, antidotes that he has provided for the common challenges um, that were predictors of divorces. So let's use the example of uh, people are getting extra forgetful, they maybe lack of sleep that they're not, you know, concentrating. So the spouse forgot to pay bills or forgot to pick up some eggs. Well, and then the other person's really irritable and getting really annoyed. So simple communication techniques, even as using a starter um, start up of the conversation, not starting with a harsh tone, or let's say um, taking responsibility, a quick, simple, my bad, instead of getting defensive, um, or maybe describing your own feelings instead of your spouse's should feel a certain way. And if, you know, conflict started, remember to self-soothe and take a break. And so some of the basic communication uh, skills can be very helpful right now. Mm -hmm. Now then, the last um, scenario that we talked about, I think that again, when we think about extending grace during a pandemic, during a critical incident, um, it may look very different that the person who has the tendency to withdraw, this is the time to remind yourself, I need to um, really practice this social resilience muscle, emotional resilience muscle that I'm going to reach out, I'm going to actually practice being vulnerable and said something simple like, man, that was a really overwhelming day at work. Mm -hmm. So even something like that to um, open up a tiny bit and maybe ease your spouse and not make your spouse go, oh my gosh, you know, he's having an affair and, you know, something's wrong. And then on the other hand, the spouse can be also during this time, you know, sit back and take a deep breath and say to yourself, like, okay, I need to give him space or her space. I don't need to jump, you know, steps ahead of myself. I just need to provide the opportunity for them to open up and be patient instead of, you know, nagging them so much more. So these are some of the simple measures that if you are a lot more mindful about yourself and your spouse, you can um, extend grace in a very unique way. But of course, if it gets really challenging, don't be afraid to reach um, for professional help. If you guys had already had a therapist before, this might be a good time to, you know, schedule an appointment for uh, another checkup. So um, definitely there is help out there. Thank you so much. So I just want to, um, I want to do a little reflective listening to make sure that I can put it into some bullet points to, to like grasp everything that you said, because you put so much great information into this, um, into what you just shared. So I think I'm hearing that a little review of get to know each other, like what's your personality type, what's your communication style, um, is helpful to remember and reconnect in that intimate way of just saying, hey, I see you, I know you, you know me, you see me, and reestablishing that trust foundation of like knowing each other really well. And I think I'm also hearing some other pieces about like being patient, being gentle, um, bringing things up in a way that is um, when you're ready to bring things up and to invite them into sharing things as, as well, 
as they're ready to do so and um, practicing the, the inner skills that you already have and to um, reinforce and to um, encourage those existing skills. And if anything gets too overwhelming, um, that requires professional help to go seek professional help. Am I hearing you right? Yeah, that's exactly correct. Okay, thank you so much. I just wanted to um, you know, take a moment to do that in case those that are listening might also need a little refresher because I know I needed to kind of organize that. <laughs> thank you so much. So, um, I do have a, a last question, if that's okay. Of course. Thank you. Um, what are some signs that people can benchmark as progress in their efforts to find their way back to stable communication? That's actually a really good question. Um, so on one hand, there are a lot of good assessment tools out there. So to name a few, you know, the uh, Godman Couples Checkup or Prepare and Rich. So they're very systematic in helping um, couples uh, understand how they're communicating, how their relationship is, and they could do it online, um, individually, at the convenience of their home. They're very affordable. So on one hand, couples can definitely try and do something like that. And I understand that during a critical time like this, maybe people are so overwhelmed that they cannot, you know, go and start something or research on which assessment tools to use. Um, then it is actually really helpful not to um, measure too much on your spouse's effort, but focus on maybe let's say I set some goals for myself that are personal, achievable, um, measurable, like I'm going to uh, give more massages, snag less, listen more, and then you have an honest appraisal uh, regularly about yourself and maybe you're going to ask yourself questions about oh how am I doing recently about x y and z instead of kind of keeping scores of hey you did not listen and you did not you know blah 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 and so when it comes to how people are progressing in communication focus on what you can control mm -hmm. and not the spouse's efforts, because again, we're trying to focus on extending grace during this time. Um, so, but if you're doing well, then there may be a higher chance that the communication can be more effective just by your effort of your personal side. Mm, that is so helpful. And it sounds like really achievable, practical tools. Thank you so much for sharing your expertise with us today, Karis. And I hope to chat again soon. Hope this is helpful for all the couples out there. And if you'd like to engage with more of Karis's material to learn from, she has courses on her website as well, and it is linked below. The code to view some of her material for free is COVID-19, in all caps. And um, I just wanna welcome you to continue to connect with me here. Subscribe, like, comment, and I'll try to keep giving you practical tools and easy tips to help you self-care through these times. Thanks so much, you guys, and see you next time. Thank you for having me. Thank you, Karen.